but at the same time it just felt like it would be cool if I showed you guys the result of basically bleaching your hair many times but it's that guilty pleasure man it's that guilty pleasure of taking it out <laughs> And I'm not, I've never done anything like this to my hair. And of course, through time, I knew this was gonna come. Such a terrible break. I'm gonna break again with a black ball. I will go back to another video of Actors Universe today, guys. <laughs> As y'all can see, I kind of like shaped up my beard recently. I like shaved this part out. Not, I didn't shave, I trimmed it down. And uh, yeah, that's what I look like. But I want to get into my dreadlocks. My dreadlocks is going through a lot right now. And so I want to be able to disclose to you guys what's going on. Um, yeah, it's kind of like the way I'm looking at it right now is just different. It's thinning out a little bit here and there, and uh, it might be time to let it go. You know what I mean? What? But I'm not sure yet, because I'm regrowing my back and my hair. I want that to be my new look, like a Mohawk dreadlocks. Uh, but at the same time, I have a long, I think maybe 16 inches hair. And so I don't know what to do with it yet. Uh, today I want to talk to you guys about my hair and what it's looking like right now. As y'all can see, the green is kind of fading, and you can see the bleach uh, currently, which looks nice. You know, it's pineapple uh, world inspired, so I don't mind that look. But I have one issue with my hair right now that I want to discuss to you guys about. But before I do that, we're gonna play a pool real quick, see if I can get these going man at least give me like six hits is it punts hits whatever it is and then we gonna go home and talk about this here Are you done? Are, are, are you are you are you done? A lot of you guys have been asking me how long have I been growing my hair in general, not my dreadlocks, but my hair. And so I dropped a video that was gonna come out of my I'm gonna do this again. So I dropped a video recently on uh, Pineapple World. Show you guys really like how long it took me to get my hair this long. And the process during that, like what I had to overcome. The hardest part in my challenge and everything. And I'm gonna do a part two also about the depth of basically my challenge with growing hair. But for the video that I just dropped, I go over basically how long have I grown my hair, including my dreadlocks. Go check that out. Link should be in the description or hit the link right here on this side I believe. Now I'm gonna flip the side. Recently I noticed something happening to my hair and of course through time I knew this was gonna come and it's the consequence of bleaching and your hair so many times. And this is common with a lot of people that bleach their hair a lot or it's more so common for those that don't know how to bleach their hair. If you have dreadlocks and you know you're dyeing your tips or you're trying to dye your tips or you know have a different color you go through a process where you bleach your hair and sometimes you over bleach it and it end up being a breakout party right on your tip of your hair. For me that didn't really happen because when I bleached my hair, I always did one thing correctly, which is timing it right. Timing it right or under is way better than over timing it or over trying to bleach it and then going over the time limit that you should have. So for my hair, you know, you guys start to see like the little skinniness of the dreadlocks where the bleach starts. And that comes, of course, through time. In general, your dreadlocks is supposed to thin 
as time goes. So even if you don't notice half of my dreadlock is thinning out, it is really entirely my whole dread is thinning. And it's because through time, you know, it gets locked up more, it gets more tension, it gets more mature. Having a skinnier dreadlock is a common thing even for people that don't bleach their hair. The same people that don't bleach their hair actually go through a thinning process, especially in the back of their hair, because that's where most of the friction happens and that's where you sleep on the most. The thickness of my locks is not really like bad at all because it's still thick. You can still see thick locks. Look at this, thick lock. You can see thick lock. This is not that, but it's a regular, I would believe. But there was one dreadlock that I really noticed of it thinning out from the middle. And that's when it becomes like, oh my God, okay, I'm pushing it, you know what I mean? And a lot of you guys have been telling, telling me, don't bleach your hair, don't bleach your hair, and different things like that. But I knew what I wanted to do with my hair. And during this three year, almost three years, this December will become my third year journey. Over this three year of my dreadlocks, I've done everything that I wanted with my dreadlocks so that on my next set, I will probably go more natural and not try to bleach it as much as right now. But I can't promise that I will never bleach it again because that's a promise that I can't make in front of a, a whole 30,000 subscribers that I have, maybe 31 now. Yeah, let me get down to what I'm talking about so you guys can see. And I kind of started to mess around with it too, I ain't gonna lie. By that, I mean I kept on touching it up and like making it worse basically. I know, it sounds bad, but have you ever had like something that's painful in your body or something like that and you keep poking that pain? Because that feels painful, but it feels good type. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, man. So I'm gonna just show y'all to see if I can find that hair. Because I saved it to finish it on this video, to be honest with you. Yep. There it is. I'll take out my second ponytail. I have two ponytails in here. I noticed that this hair was kind of like thinning out really bad. And it's not, I'm not talking about where the roots is, where it was not dyed, where it's bleached at. I'm talking about just a random part of it just being thin and loose. So I kind of started messing around with it and I made it look like this. Sorry guys. I don't recommend you guys doing this, but it's just that pleasure that came with it of messing with it. And I'm very guilty of it. I'm so sorry. And I wanted to strip it out, like snap it out. But at the same time, it just felt like it would be cool if I showed you guys the result of basically bleaching your hair many times, but at the same time, not taking care of it as best as you can. So you end up bleaching your hair, of course, you gotta end up putting some kind of oil, a conditioner, whatever it helps your hair out, get that nutrition that it needs. Cause where your bleach starts or where you bleach your hair at, you're usually killing the protein that usually comes down to that hair and even the root of it. So basically you drying it out. So that's why it feels like it's more dry-ish than your regular hair whenever you bleach it. Not as much of the trend, nutrients go to your tip of your locks. That's why the tip of your locks usually end up falling apart or even thinning out or break, having the most breakage on the bottom. Now recently I blunt my tips and that's why my tip doesn't look bad but as you can see throughout my hair you see a little bit of this going on uh, you can see a little bit of going uh, that going on right here also but the only two different thing about these two is that this one is almost like impossible kind of like to fix because there's a bunch of dry hair around it versus this one you can fix this with crochet needle and palm roll method and you can literally just wall out type of deal but i'm not going to do that right now i'm just going to let it do what it do no it will combine to it but as for this, it's kind of like done. And I like some part of my hair not being perfect also. I know it's weird to say. I know a lot of you guys going to comment like, what the heck are you doing to your hair? But it's that guilty pleasure, man. It's that guilty pleasure of taking it out. And I'm not, I've never done anything like this to my hair. Usually if I notice this, I usually like fold it in like this and trying to crochet needle it. Or I try to step it over like this and then, you know, crochet needle it or do some kind of crochet work. But for this one, this felt good to do it. But I was like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna be honest with them. I'm gonna show them this guilty pleasure that I have taking out my hair. And this may be even the part where we start taking out the rest of my dreadlocks. I should have not said that. Cause I was supposed to be next. All right guys, that was a joke, okay? Maybe he's not. Just subscribe to follow my journey. And I know, I know man. I know you're, 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 you're mad. I know you're upset, but hey man, say man, it's your boy. It's like I'm not even tugging a lot of it, like a hard. I'm just literally just mm, mm, mm. almost like combing it out with my fingers though. And that's how you know it ain't doing good over here. A lot of people ask me if I take care of my dreadlocks like they supposedly think that I should. I do not take care of my dreadlock like you 
Trust me. Whoever is the worst person that's taking care of the dreadlocks watching this video, I'll probably take care of my hair worse than you. And it's crazy because my hair is really nice. Like I show you guys the thickness of it. There's still the maintenance of it. Like the locked up, it just looks like it's well put. Like I do something to it every day. And I believe that's because naturally, I figured out that recently, the reason I have dandruff issues is because my hair produces a lot of oil. And that oil, I believe, helps me get my hair together in a way. Like make it look still good. Make it still, after all this bleach, still make it look good. You know, like I always tell you guys, I bleach my hair because I want to do it. I want to see a style of it. I didn't grow up my dreadlocks for no reason but for me to enjoy it. And it's not for or any spiritual reasons, natural reasons, or well, natural reason being fashion, and that's the only reason that I grow my dreadlocks out. So for me to do like a bunch of dyes and different things like that, I don't really feel bad for my hair in that way because that's what I want to do. It's kind of like how other people that have short hair end up having their whole head bleached or something like that, or even cut or doing something weird with it. It's because they want to do that. And of course for a journey that's like a dreadlock, it's kind of like hard for people to fathom that sometimes, but I know most of you guys support me through during my dyeing and my bleaching process and I appreciate that you know to each his own type of thing but at the same time I tell you guys not to do what I do all the time say so if you go and bleach your hair bleach it this way that way do it the right way don't put too much time on the bleach use the right things oil your hair usually I don't talk about oiling your hair but you should oil your hair um, moisturize your hair actually that's what the right term is so with a little bit of piece left I took it out and now this one is basically without any tip. Yeah, this basically, you guys can always try to combine hair back in here, but for my recommendation is if it is a bleached hair and stuff like that, usually will end up working its way down and coming out. And I've had that experience too. I'm not just saying that just to say that. It actually works its way down to come out of like the bottom of your hair. Wherever you have that, like if you let's say you combine it right here, you crochet needle it, Later on, it literally will end up just falling out like this. Boom, falls to the floor while you're showering or something. But for those of you guys that want to learn how to blend tips also, I'm going to just give you guys a quick tip and also show you guys how to do this. All right, to start, you want to twist it now where it's skinny at. You want to twist it where it's thick at because this is an extra little hair that you got. Fold it right here. You'll still have a tip that needs to get blunted. So if you fold it where it should be at, where it should like, where you kind of see the blunt and the darkness of your dreadlocks because it's more mature, that's where you should be folding it at so that you have a really nice looking tip at the end. And then you kind of go the, with the rest of the hair around your hair and then use she need to kind of work it through. Once you have it looking like this, you're not fully done yet, but you want to palm roll it to get it to stick to each other more and so that it doesn't come out also. So right here is pretty good already, but you want a little bit more work to do with the crochet needle because I can still see the strip that I twisted around it, literally the pattern. And you don't want to almost see the pattern by the time you're done because if you can see the pattern, it means that it easily will come out later on when you wash it or when it gets wet. Crochet needle, what you're doing is you're pushing it from one side, bring it out to the other side, wrap the hair in within, bring it to the roots of the dreadlock, and kind of like start twisting it as you're doing that, or twisting that. And be careful not to poke between your fingers your nails with this, because I've heard some people that done it, got stuck in there, and sounds disgusting for me, never happened. Also, I'm gonna fix this hair right up here that you saw earlier, guys. When it's extra like that, hanging out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna twist it to where it looks neat, so I can see the neatness of it. Use the crochet needle and get rid of that pattern that we just did, that twisting pattern that we just did, we gotta get rid of that. And that's kind of like the goal for crochet needle to get rid of the pattern that you have started with. So if you have started with twisting method, you shouldn't be able to see the twisting method. You should be able to see crocheted method or crochet lock. And that's kind of like how you mature your locks also faster if you wanna get into this method. I'm gonna fix it up here too. I'm probably not gonna touch it up here cause I need to retwist anyways up here. But some like locks that I've already formed shouldn't go through this issue well it would happen but you should be able to fix the type of deal you know you shouldn't just look at it and be like oh that's natural sometimes you just gotta put your hands to the needle man 
naturally blessed I would say having like a draw lock that I have it's easy for me to lock it up and stuff like that and voila kind of done with it I know the draw lock doesn't look good in general like the whole thing just zigzag zag and all that but sometimes that happens. you know you have some buddings it's very natural it may not look pleasant uh, by itself but with the rest of the draw lock when it comes out like this uh, you can't even notice it. it looks pretty nice and neat well that's it for the video thank you guys for liking this video and commenting down below I appreciate everybody that do that uh, soon I have an announcement that's coming up about a website about a dreadlock jewelry about I am gonna tell y'all much stay tuned hit the bell button till next time keep acting the verse you're in the verse I'm active verse and I'm out stay tuned you dig